She's beautiful. The tiny scar on her cheek makes her more so, not less. The freckles that are pretty much the only inheritance from her father even more. The slight overbite, the terrible taste in earrings, none of it matters. Or if it matters, it's only because it makes everything else more beautiful. And she knows I think so. How could she not? She's smart, like she said, and she's best friends with my sister. There's no way she could not know. And she desires Nathan, not me. Her anxiety, which I understand, hooray, looked for a place of safety and it found Nathan. It didn't find me. And she knows how I'll take that information. This should hurt my heart. It does. I can feel it. I should also be humiliated that she knows how I feel, and I do. I can feel that too, but I look at her and I just want to make it all okay. So I have absolutely no idea why the hell I say, I'm in love with you, Anna. She smiles a bit at that, looking as surprised at the smile as I am at my words. Mikey, she says, I don't think you are. Then she screams at the deer that's jumped out of the trees and onto the road in front of us, and there's no time to even break, and we hit it, taking its legs lap from under it, which everyone in these parts knows is the worst thing that can happen when you hit a deer, because now 600 pounds of panic, dying, unstoppable deer carcass are flying right up the hood straight at us. This is how people die, I think, in that instant. And Henna and I are both ducking to the middle of the seat and our heads hit together with a funny coconut sound and glass is breaking and metal is bending above us, which is so loud, so loud. And something hits me hard in the cheek and I hear Henna make a soft oof sound and her body shifts away from mine and it's only now I realize the car is still moving. And I reach over her to try to steer, but the steering wheel is snapped off and I feel us veering and tipping and we come to a slamming stop and the passenger side airbag goes off so ferociously I actually feel my nose breaking. Then it's quiet. Henna, I say. Henna? Her voice, when it comes, is deep and guttural, pain-filled. My arm, is all she says. I pull myself up to an almost sitting position. Rain hits my face. The roof of Henna's car is peeled nearly all the way off. We're pushed up against the dashboard and I turn my neck, ow, 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 to see that the deer somehow went all the way over the top of us, which is some kind of freaking miracle. Its bulk takes up the entire back seat, its neck broken, its dead weight pressing against us. The engine stopped when we drove into what I now see as a ditch, and I can hear movement all around us. I must be in shock. Dozens of deer, dozens of them, are leaping out of the forest on our side of the road, crossing it and disappearing through the tree line on the other side. They keep coming. I've never seen anything like it. It's unreal. Mikey, Hina says. Her eyes wide with fear and the same shock as she sees what I'm seeing. Her left arm looks awful, twisted in a horrible way, so I take her right hand and hold it as the impossible flood of deer spills around us like we're an island in a river. <laughs>